In our last session, we went over strategic planning, and we began looking at the four functional areas of strategic planning, marketing, operations, human resources, and finances. We talked about how to best structure preparing your strategic plan. Today, we'll go into marketing. It is my recommendation at this point that you take marketing, operations, finances, and human resources and farm them out to your team, each team member taking one of the functional areas. That way they can be writing on that while you're writing on the strategic plan. Then, when you get those done, you can copy them and send them out to the other team members to be commented on and edited. So, let's get started. This first step in your strategic planning is building the business strategy. This is where you'll spend the majority of your time and effort for this planning task. You will consider all four functional areas, and you'll consider many variables within each of those areas. I'll remind you of where you are in the process from time to time. In the sections that follow, you will have the opportunity to identify and research alternative strategies for each functional area of the business, marketing, operations, human resources, and finances. Begin by returning to your whole farm SWOT analysis to review the internal strengths of your present business and any perceived industry opportunities, as well as the internal weaknesses and external business threats you and your planning team identified. Good business strategies always take advantage of current business strengths and market opportunities. At the same time, a solid business strategy will address current weaknesses and perceived threats. With your SWOT analysis in hand, you are ready to begin developing specific marketing, operations, human resources and finance strategies for the business. Once you have accomplished this portion of the planning task, let's move on to marketing. The marketing component of your business strategy will determine, in a large part, the success of your business. Here is a factual statement, without customers, a business is out of business. Your marketing strategy is about defining your customer, or target market, and tailoring your product, pricing, distribution and promotion strategies to satisfy that target market. Marketing experts warn that businesses that are product-oriented, like farming, who try to sell what they can produce without first looking at customers' needs, risk developing a product that won't sell at all. Instead, most successful businesses are customer-oriented, they design marketing strategies around the needs of their customers. At the end of this step, you should be able to confidently answer the following questions. Who are our target customers and what do they value? What product will we offer and how is it unique? Who are our competitors and how will we position ourselves? How and when will we move our product to market? How will we price our product? And lastly, how and what will we communicate with buyers or customers? As you begin your research, track any expenses associated with the marketing strategies that you develop. You will be asked to record this information later in your marketing strategy summary. Most marketing plans begin with a description of the business target market or its potential customers. Your first task in building a customer strategy is to identify your target market. Target markets are most commonly characterized as either individual households or businesses. Direct marketing to individual households or customers can be performed on a small, medium or large scale. This form of marketing tends to be more profitable than business-to-business -business marketing because of value-added opportunities and the lack of middlemen. Most direct market products are consumer goods or services. Popular direct market opportunities include community-supported agriculture, CSA, Pick Your Own, PYO, and farmers markets. Lately, internet marketing and sales has proven to be quite profitable and beneficial to your entire business enterprise. Business-to-business -business marketing typically involves sales of a raw commodity or product that will be used as an input. Traditional commodity producers almost always practice business-to-business -business marketing where customers include grain companies, processors, packers and millers. Today specialty or differentiated commodity producers, however, are learning to build in more profit by responding directly to market demand for unique products, such as tofu-grade soybeans, high-oil corn, grass-fed livestock, organic feed, and heirloom vegetables. Don't overlook today's business-to-business -business opportunities to contract and market specialty commodities. That said, if you plan to market a raw commodity directly to an elevator, packer or overseas broker, your marketing strategy will be very different, and presumably less intensive, than that of someone who is looking at direct marketing a differentiated product to a well-defined market of individual customers. 
In order to fully define your target market and corresponding customer strategy, you will need to identify your target market segment, who your customers are and what they value, and sales potential, how much they are willing to buy. This research is critical for building your business. Marketing author Michael O'Donnell notes that one of the most common planning mistakes is failure to fully understand the market makeup and what segment the company will concentrate on. This process of identifying customers' preferences and dividing the larger target market into submarkets is called market segmentation. By identifying and targeting specific market segments you should be able to develop more effective packaging, price and promotion strategies. Markets can be segmented in a variety of ways. The most common forms of segmentation are by demographic, geographic, psychographic and product use characteristics. For instance, a market can be segmented into domestic and international subgroups if you are planning to market organic soybeans. Your market can also be segmented by the frequency of customer purchases, weekly versus monthly vegetable customers. Begin your target market research by developing a customer profile. Customer profiles can help you determine if a market segment is large enough to be profitable. Break your target market up into segments based on differences in their geographic location. Demographic characteristics, social class, personality, buying behavior or benefits sought. I have worksheets that can help you capture your market segment research. If you plan to produce and market a traditional bulk commodity, you won't have much trouble calculating sales potential. The market for undifferentiated commodities is fluid and can typically absorb all that you produce, albeit at a lower price sometimes. Estimating sales potential becomes more challenging and important when tapping into a specialty commodity market such as lentils, that may have limited demand, or when your target market is highly sought after and made up of individual households. As a specialty commodity producer, your customer, usually another business, will make known how much they are willing to buy short term, one to two years, either through a written contract or verbal agreement. Projecting long-term sales potential may prove more difficult as these markets are usually immature and untested. Similarly, your task of projecting sales potential can be tricky when marketing to individual households. You will need to conduct careful research and be honest with yourself about the market's growth potential. If you plan on selling to a direct market, here is a simple way to project direct market sales potential. Begin by locating your farm on a county map and draw 25 and 50 mile radius circles around your farm. Count how many towns or cities fall within the circles. Using this map, Add up the number of potential households that live in the nearby cities. These households represent your core potential business customers. Then, with a feel for the number of potential customers, estimate the potential value of sales per household. This is your sales potential. Begin by estimating the number of customers in each segment and projecting their weekly, monthly or annual purchases. You can develop sales estimates from household or county purchasing records, available at your public library, from your own surveys in-person interviews, or from secondary sources, such as published purchasing pattern data. Excellent sources for consumer demographic and purchasing pattern data are KC Market System, Group Sourcebook, SRDS Lifestyle Market Analyst, and New Strategist Publications Household Spending, Who Spends How Much on What. These are available in the reference section of your public library. Although much of the market research needed for a business plan can begin with your own impressions and a little footwork at the library you may reach a point where professional help is needed. Many businesses find it useful to hire a marketing consultant to develop proper surveys, lead focus groups, or to conduct telephone interviews. Representatives from your local extension service or your State Department of Agriculture may be able to assist you in locating qualitative and quantitative information for a customer profile. Financial assistance may also be available to help cover some of the costs associated with your marketing research. You should check with your State Department of Agriculture your local county extension service. These phone numbers should be listed in your telephone book, as well as the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, to see what programs are available in your area.